In this video a schematic from an audio amp that delivers approximately 5 or 8 watts. At first the music that I'm going to play global sounds only uh, a few seconds I think it's copyrighted but um, the aim that I take a real CD is this when you want to test your audio amps uh, use a standard CD player because mp3 files have a too limited bandwidth and this also regards this circuit input unit for an audio amp that's here two 10k potentiometers coupling cap in uh, coupling cap out and that's here Two channels, right in, left in, 10k, etc. etc. And connect your wire indeed directly here. So uh, there must be, oh, even in, in this simple circuit, there must be one earth or ground point. So this goes to the end amplifier, this to the right, and this to the left channel. I want to demonstrate that now. At first the sound. I use my old Aristona player and this is the music. So, stop. Um, I think it sounds good and I found on the oscilloscope that it has a quite uh, right characteristic between 20 Hz and uh, 20 kHz. Here is a schematic from that, uh, that amplifier. I have to pan over. Important to tell <coughs> that this capacitor here stabilizes the whole circuit and has also be to be connected directly to the one and only uh, earth point. By the way, when you want to know more about audio amps, read this book. This is my book. It's full of tested, well tested audio circuits. And so I think it's a it's a very informative book. Anyway. Back to the circuit. You can buy this book on the Lulu website. Search for author Ko Tillman. That's me. Again, back to the circuit. Um, it works on 40 volts. And um, this is how it was made. Pan over the circuit. A 2N Sorry, a 2955 PMP 2N3055. Here is the adjustable zener. I've published that in an earlier video on my YouTube channel. Here is the input stage, in fact, the Darlington. And this potentiometer here sets the working point from your amplifier. That's very important. So send. A sine wave into it, look on the scope, it's not uh, active now but anyway look on the scope whether your sine wave is properly amplified and then align this potentiometer and when it all works to that has also much to do with the uh, supply voltage when it works you can um, replace the pot meter by two fixed value resistors. Here are the pin connections from all the used transistors. Backside from the 2N3055, front from the 2955, front from the BD139 that uh, aligns the quiescent current here, also important. This is the aligning for the quiescent current and also to avoid uh, crossover distortion. 
also you have to test that with the oscilloscope or by listening to the circuit. This resistor here, 28 ohms or 39 ohm, prevents oscillations when you have very long uh, loudspeaker wires. Back to the circuit. Here the transistor that aligns the quiescent current and the, uh, the crossover distortion aligned with this potentiometer. Here is that cap. What I've told earlier that has to be connected directly from the positive to the negative lead uh, to prevent oscillations. Here the decoupling unit also active but this uh, capacitor is more important. Here the 4700 microfarad output cap. Here the 28 or 30 ohms resistor that prevents oscillation on long loudspeaker wires. And what I uh, wanted to tell that the, the, the 2N3055 needs a very good cooling plate. You can see that here. And in fact the 2955 here has in this setup, this is only experimental, a uh, too small cooling plate. So I have to uh, make this better. Anyway, I think it's a very, very simple and properly made audio amp. And um, let's pan over the circuit for another time. Take your time to draw it over. Takes approximately 100 milliampere up to 400 milliampere. And I wish you luck when you want to make this circuit. Easy to make and it works properly. When you do experiments with these kinds of amplifiers, always use a power supply here with which you can align the voltage very, very slowly to the circuit. That's very important. Never connect the power supply directly, boom, to uh, the audio amp, but slowly raise the voltage and see what happens. And see also whether the circuit takes current. And when it takes too much current, be careful. Test your circuit again and study it again uh, to see whether you have made it properly.